This is going to be a study on the subject of how to live in the Word of God. Many Christians today really lack an appetite for the words of God. They have no desire to open the book. They have no desire to read it or to talk about it or to study it. They think it's just a book that sits on grandma's bookshelf in the hallway or something like that. They have no desire. Uh, when they hear that you're buying Bibles that are 50 and $60 and $100, they, they look at you like you're crazy even though they're buying video games that are 50 and $60 and DVDs that are $30. They think you're crazy. They don't have any appetite for the Word of God whatsoever. So here are some ways that you can live in the Word. Number one, first thing in the morning, read a set number of chapters or get a set amount of time that you will read through the Bible. Just straight up reading it. Proverbs eight seventeen says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. When you get up really early in the morning and start out your day with the words of God, this sets the tone for your entire day. And Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You see, all this reading of the Bible that you do each morning, this builds up over time. Imagine if you did this for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 40, 50 years, how much time you will have spent in the words of God. Just imagine if you read five chapters in the Old Testament and five chapters in the New Testament, then that will put you through the Old Testament two times and the New Testament seven times. In 10 years, that's 20 times in the Old Testament. And in 10 years, that's 70 times in the New Testament. Most grandmas who live up in the mountains and are close to God and are seen as, you know, the most godly person in a lot of people's life haven't even read through the Bible once. And they're the most godly person in most people's lives. Imagine what this time spent in the Word will do for you over the years when you get around 70 and 80 and you're the grandma or the grandpa. 20 years from now, 30, 40 years from now, say that you're 30 years old now. In 40 years, if you read the Bible, if you start now and read the Bible through five chapters in the old, five chapters in the new each day, by the time you're 70, you'll have read the New Testament 140 times if you just read five chapters a day. Imagine the wisdom and the counsel that you could give to a young person, your grandkids, if you were not just somebody who's had a lot of experiences in life, but someone who spent time in the words of God and had that wisdom from just spending time in the word. Because most people that we see as extremely spiritual and godly have not even read the Bible once themselves. Next, get an audio Bible on your phone or make a copy of a CD with the words of God on audio. Play it in your car when you go places. Jeremiah 23, 18 says, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Matthew eleven fifteen, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Have you ever thought about that idle time spent that you spend in the way to work? or at the doctor, or when you're going to pick up the kids at school, use this time to get more familiar with the words of God. This will also help you pronounce the names and words in the Bible so that you can read it easier. Maybe even work on making your own audio Bible, even if it's just for your own personal use, your own thing that you do to try to stay right with the Lord. That way you're forced into learning to pronounce the names and it keeps your time invested in the book instead of on a bunch of other junk next use a smartphone or an ipod or mp3 player to listen to preaching at work and audio bible too uh, in first uh, thessalonians 5 20 it says despise not prophesying you need to love preaching First Corinthians one eighteen says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. 
2 Timothy 4 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You need somebody to preach the word to you. You need somebody to reprove and rebuke and exhort you with all long suffering and doctrine. I remember listening to preaching eight to ten hours a day at the job that I had when I first got saved, and it really helped knock a lot of the rough edges off and, and, uh, and the pet sins, out of, get them out of my life. Be sure to get some doctrinal preaching. That's how you get fed. That's how you grow. That's how certain topics and doctrines really get embedded in your mind by hearing uh, somebody preach it to you. Number four, during times when you can't listen to headphones or sit down to read the Bible, you can memorize it. Write down the verses on a small piece of paper or a card. Every few minutes, pull out the card out of your pocket. Read five words of the verse. Say them over and over in your head. Then put it back in your pocket. Uh, I, I print out a whole chapter and take it to work with me or I write down five verses, take it to work with me. If I'm in a situation where I can't listen to my headphones or read the Bible, I'll take it, take it out of my pocket, read five words, put it back in my pocket, say those words over and over again till I have it memorized. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. What better way to learn the Bible than to just straight up memorize it? That way when someone says, What was that verse that said such and such you already know it by heart and you can say it right off the top of your head like a walking talking bible they say Sammy Allen was a walking bible he he could quote so many verses they say you could read a verse out of the bible and Ruckman could tell you book chapter and verse and where it was on the page if it was in his bible number five pick a certain book of the bible and study a chapter of it all week. I start out by searching each keyword or phrase with each sword or sword searcher and write down the references in my Bible. Then after I've studied the chapter on my own, I get audio commentaries by uh, other people and book commentaries on that particular book of the Bible. That way you learn. You learn more and more, consistently learning. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you study just one New Testament chapter a week, just one a week, this would put you through the New Testament in about five years. And five years goes by fast. I mean, look at your pictures on your iPhone and go back five years ago, and you, you'll think, man, that wasn't that long ago. Time is flying by. It's going by really fast. You need to do something with that time. Next, pick a certain Bible topic each week to learn. Every week, think of a topic you want to learn about. Find everything you can about that topic in the Bible. Find every sermon you can about that topic and really get that topic together in your mind and have it the, the notes on it in your Bible or in a journal somewhere. Next, write Bible verses on pieces of paper and tape them in key places around your house and in your car, like next to the bathroom mirror or in front of your toilet or on the fridge. Also somewhere in your, in your vehicle so you can read them at the red light or you can read them while you're sitting in the parking lot waiting for your wife to get out shopping. Uh, Deuteronomy 11.20 says, And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. So even the Lord's telling you, you ought to write these things down. So you'll just be walking somewhere in your house and you'll look up and there's a Bible verse and you read it. If you read that thing so many times, you're going to have it memorized. Then you can put a new one up there. Next, pray that you never lose the privilege to read the Word of God and to hear it and to study it. You don't want to take it for granted. You don't want to start becoming unthankful that you have such easy access to the words of God and nobody's trying to take it away from you. I carry the Bible to work with me every day. Nobody's ever tried to take it away from me one time. I mean, if anything, don't even want to touch it or look at it or see it, let alone try to even take it away from me. 
Amos at 11 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So there's going to be a day coming, most likely, in this country, where you're not going to be allowed to read the Bible. You, you need to have it hid in your heart. Next, study an entire book of the Bible each week. Get like an overview of it. Get a hold of the overviews that I've done on here. I'm, I'm trying to put up one a week. And if you do one a week, it'll take you through the, the Bible in 66 weeks. Uh, get an understanding of what each book of the Bible is about. And in a, in a little over a year, you'll have studied each book. The Bible is like a puzzle. Start on the outside and work your way in. Get to know the characters. Get to know Isaiah and Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Daniel. What they were like. What they, what their good characteristics were. What made them great. What made them not so great. Next, get a wide margin Bible to fill with notes and pass down to someone else. Leave something behind. Uh, for, for example, uh, David Hoffman who made the Common Man's Reference Bible. When he first started putting that Bible together, it was to pass down to his kids. And then it ended up being something that he's put out and now thousands of people have it. And now when he's dead and gone, if time continues to go on, he's always going to have somebody that's got his notes and his references there. And they're using that to study the Bible and get closer to God themselves. Make your own reference Bible. Make your own audio Bible. You know, make your own things. This will help you get close to God yourself and be something you can pass on to somebody else and help them get interested in the Word. Next, believe the words. While spending all the time in the Bible, you need to believe the words that you're reading. You're more likely to spend time with something you trust than something that isn't trustworthy. And the Bible says in Romans 3, 4, Let God be true, but every man a liar. You can't trust men, but you can trust the Bible. When everything around you is a lie, you know that the Bible is the only true thing. When you can't trust the news, when you can't trust your friends and your family, you always got that Bible, you can pick it out, and everything that it's saying is true, and it's going to come to pass. But these are just some things on how to live in the Word. And don't let time pass you by. Don't wake up and be 70 years old one day and haven't even read the Bible through one time. Don't wake up and be 70 years old and not even know what the rapture is and the millennium is and what dispensationalism is. You know, there's good, godly, spiritual people who are 80 years old and don't even know who the kings are in the Bible. The kings of Israel and Judah. They couldn't name one. Maybe David they might know. But don't wake up and not know anything and be old. I mean, if, if the, the thing about an old person is those gray hairs on your head should mean you know some things. But we're finding more and more that the old, older people, the older generation, don't know too much. And just imagine when the younger generation today grows up and gets older, they're really not going to know nothing because they're spending all their time on worldly junk that's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help them, and it's not going to help the, their kids because they're not going to have any wisdom to pass down. They're not going to have a wide-margin Bible with full of notes to pass down. They're not going to have a desire of reading the Word of God to pass down. So get in the Bible and stay in the Bible. 